One more time, I believe. Yes, I believe you're my healer. And I believe you. I believe it, I believe. I believe you're my Lord. I believe. I believe you're more than enough for me. Jesus, you're. You're more than enough for me. Jesus, you're all I need. Jesus, you're all I need. Hallelujah, Lord. Yes, Father, we re believe, Lord God, with great expectation we come tonight, Father God. We come expecting, Father God. We thank you that nothing is impossible with you, Lord God. We position our hearts, Father, to receive all that you have for us, not only tonight, but the rest of the week, Lord God. We say yes, God. Father God, our hearts are softened towards you, Lord God, because we thank you, Lord, that nothing is impossible with you, Lord, that you are more than enough, Lord God, and we just in an anticipation this weekend, Lord God, for what you're about to do in each and every one of our lives, Lord God, that we will leave this conference changed, Lord God, renewed, Lord God, restrengthened, Lord God, repositioned, Lord God, awakened, Lord God. We just thank you, Father God, for the opportunity that we have this weekend, Father God. Father, we thank you for your presence, oh God. We thank you, Lord. We adore you. You, Lord there's no one like you Father God no one can compare to you Father God oh hallelujah Lord we love you Lord we lift your name on high oh God thank you Lord that you are the king of kings and the Lord of lords that you are the way maker Father God you are the miracle worker Lord God you are our healer Lord God Father we just thank you Father God we thank you for what you are already doing father god father i just thank you lord god that in your presence father god that there's a, such a, a a turning father god in each and every one of us lord god father we say yes lord we say yes have your way father your way in us lord in our hearts lord god Father, we just thank you right now, Lord God. We come into agreement, Father God, with whatever you have in store this weekend, Lord God. We say, yes, God, have your way, Lord. We honor you, Lord. We bless your name, Father. You're worthy, God. You're worthy. You're worthy, Lord. You're so worthy, Lord. We love you, Lord. We magnify your name tonight, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. And if I can um, get your attention to the announcements. Welcome, Citadel family. We're so glad you're here with us. Welcome to Prophetic Conference 2024. Freedom unleashed. Soar into a new beginning. Inspired by Isaiah 61 verse 1. We invite you to step out of the enemy's camp and into the freedom and fresh beginnings God has prepared for you. This weekend, get ready for powerful prophetic teachings, dynamic worship, and a vibrant community of believers eager to encounter God in a life-changing way. Whether you've been walking with God for years or are just starting your journey, this is your moment to break free from spiritual bondage and soar into your divine destiny. Let's dive into what's happening this October. At the Citadel, community is at the core of who we are, and we have some amazing opportunities for you to stay connected. Middle and high schoolers, join us every Thursday at 7 p.m. for Word Youth. This is your space to connect, have fun, and grow in your relationship with God and each other. Men of Citadel, don't miss Kingdom Men on the first Saturday of every month. It's a time for personal growth, learning, and bonding with other men on a similar journey. 
Ladies, we've got Hearts on Fire every first Saturday at 11 a.m. It's all about encouragement, connection, and spiritual growth. Start your day off right with morning prayer. Join us on Zoom every weekday from 5.30 to 6.30 a.m. as we seek God together and set the tone for the day in His presence. And here's what's coming up. This Sunday, Charles Harkey will be with us for a powerful service. And this coming Wednesday, Pastor Rob Lester will be preaching. Looking ahead to November 5th and 6th, we'll be hosting two nights of healing with Prophet John Harkey. These are going to be unforgettable nights. So invite your friends and family to experience God's healing power firsthand. At the Citadel, we're all about building strong connections. Whether you're seeking a prophetic word, a place to belong, or a community to journey with, we're here for you. Don't do life alone. Welcome home. God. Praise God. Can you give a hand to this wonderful media team that did this on the media? That's amazing. How about this wonderful worship team? Come on, give them a hand. Well, listen, I, 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 I'd, like to, I'd like to ask, uh, would, would the visitors, would you just raise your hand? You're a visitor. We want you to raise your hand really high. Well, can we give them all a hand and thank them for coming? So glad you're here, and my name is Prophet John Harkey. I'm the senior leader here in this in the Citadel Church. I want to encourage you um, tomorrow morning. Uh, am I correct in saying this? We're at ten o'clock, right? At ten o'clock tomorrow morning, we're going to have three speakers. Um, we're going to have our very own uh, Pastor Veronica Acosta. She's going to open up, praise Jesus, and then right there in the middle, because I want him to have the most time, we're going to have Prophet Michael Sanchez, all the way from Bakersfield, California, praise Jesus, it's going to be amazing. Then our very own lead pastor, we're going to have him conclude our, our morning session, Pastor Rob Lester, right over here on my right, your left, and then of course... I'll be able to scream at you tomorrow night by the grace of God. But it's, it's my opportunity tonight to talk about our giving. I want you to turn in your Bibles, if you would please, to, to John chapter 17. Um, a lot of times we talk about um, the Lord's Prayer in um, the Sermon on the Mount, the book of Matthew. But this really is the Lord's Prayer. And when I tell people who have come to the knowledge of God recently, what book should I read? Obviously, the book of John is probably the most, one of the most important books in the Bible. But this is Jesus praying for us. How many believe that Jesus is praying for us? He's praying for us. Scripture tells me that he's at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you and I. Right now, he's making intercession. And I get this all the time as I travel all over the world. What's God's will for my life? Well, in this verse that I'm going to read, he answers. He answers God's will. How many want to know God's will for your life? Well, listen to what he says here. I'm going to read from the New King James Version. John 17, verse 24. Very familiar passage. It says these words. Father, I desire. I, we can stop right there. Father, I desire. Say this with me. Father, Father I, desire. I desire. Now, how many know that what Jesus is praying to his Father is going to be answered? Yeah. I desire. That they, which means you, also whom you have given me, may be with me where I am. When I was standing here and my son was leading worship along with our team and Nimsi and Annabella and Larry. Um, isn't Larry the most nicest dressed in the whole place? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> He's the best looking in the whole place. I mean, you know, I, I love it because 
because, you know, they, all the generations are up here, you know. I, I was just uh, excited. And I was thinking about this verse that if there's somewhere that I want to be, Meliana, I mean, I could be in... I could be in Florida with my grandkids. I could be in Hawaii right now. I could be in Nashville. But I want to be with him where he is. I want to be with him where he is. And right now, the Father has set a time for us to gather Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I'm going to be with him where... Listen. Now why? That they may behold my glory, which you have given me. For you love me before the foundation of the world. Now, what does that have to do with giving? Well, it's the verse before it. It's the verse before it that Jesus says, I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. I thought about something. I thought about something real when you talk about giving. That the way that you and I express our love for one another is through generosity. And, and what it is, is I express my love to my wife not just by touch, but being generous, by, by giving her a moment, giving her my ear, and actually hearing what she's saying. That's an expression of generosity. Because sometimes I don't like hear what she's saying. Come on. <laughs> That's the truth. That's the truth. Sometimes there's difficult people in my life that I don't want to hear what they have to say. But I express my generosity when I give them my listening ear because I love them. And the way that we can demonstrate our love for one another is through our offering and our giving. They will know that you belong to me because of their love for one another. They will know. I mean, the world won't see the love that you have for me and for each other. And so, so many things, I, so many problems in churches today, it all boils down to that they don't have the same desire that Jesus has. That's really it. They don't have the same desire that Jesus had. Had they had the same desire that Jesus had, a lot of problems wouldn't be would be solved. And so what happens is um, when you express generosity, that what you're doing is you're actually fulfilling your 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 you're an an, you're an answer to the prayer of Jesus. Every time I get, you know, my pastor called me today. Right before church. He said, John, thank you for that big offering. Out of the blue. I, I said, I didn't even know we gave that. I didn't even know that my wife wrote that check. You know? When we talked about some other things, you know, he just had quadruple bypass surgery. But he called me up to thank me for an offering. You know why? Because he loves me. Because I loved him. I loved the ministry. I, I expressed love. There was a mutual thing the world may know that you love each other. So how, this is how you spell million tonight. M-I-L-L-I-O-N. I prayed for $1 million for, for this property today. Because with $1 million, we could remodel the bathrooms. We have, we have an architect that has has given us a plot plan for this whole area that we're going to begin by getting that started real soon, like, like this next week, so we can start moving in that direction. 
We need a fence. We want to buy all those houses behind us. And we want to build a great church right here in the south side of Tucson. But I know that it will take the love of God's people to do that. It will take resources to do that. On my, on, my, on my right, up on the screen here, there's a way to give. You can, you can download that Church Center app. You can do a QR code, and, and, and you can give in person. And if you need an envelope, there should be one. Or, or, or you need an envelope, just raise your hand. We can, uh, the ushers will come and give you an envelope. We've got, an, we got some people over here that need an envelope. And then also, if you're giving cash, uh, you can put that in. And put, make sure you write your name so we can, or writing a check, we can, we can give you tax credit at the end of the year. Praise Jesus for that. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to hold up your offering right now. I'll give you a few moments. And um, if you don't know how to spell million, uh, um, I know how to spell billion. <laughs> we could use a billion too. I can spend it. You know, I can spend it. I just got back from South Africa. Meliana told me that trip cost me how much? $35,000. It's a lot of money. But 10 churches got planted, Pastor Steve. 10 churches got planted. And you know what? Because I'm believing God, I did not know that. I did not know that. I'm still crying over that. When I stood up last week, Thursday, a week ago, I'm standing in I'm standing in Johannesburg. We were there, Pastor Steve, last year, and Bosman turned to me and said, "Your gift planted ten churches." And I uh, and I and I I um, I'm believing God that the Citadel Church will plant ten churches. So here I sowed into someone else. For my own miracle. Can I tell you something right now? I know that I'm going to get all the 35000 back and more for what I sowed. I didn't go there to take. I'm going to get it all back. I know. It's going to be a matter of a couple of weeks. It's all going to come back. How do I know that? Because you know what? Father, I desire. I desire. That, yeah, I desire. Because Jesus is praying for me. I, I'm in line with God's word. Would you hold up your offering right now? Let me give you an opportunity to pray for that offering, for its multiplication and its use. That every dime that comes in, every dollar that comes in, that we would be good stewards because we're held accountable for every dime that we have been given. Father, I thank you for the generosity of your people. I thank you, Father, that you're going to open the floodgates of heaven. And pour out a blessing that your people cannot contain. I pray that every need of this conference, every, every need that, that happens, the, the honorarium for, for Prophet Michael, for the honorarium for Pastor Steve, that the needs would be met for this conference. And I pray, oh Lord Jesus, that when we, at the end on Saturday afternoon, when we write them a check, that they would say, oh, my gosh, thank you for honoring us. Because when we honor your people, we honor you. Bless this offering and bless your people. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Once the, once the basket has passed your row, I want you to stand up and begin to worship God. They're going to lead us in a, in a chorus of worship. And I believe. You're my healer, and I believe that you are all I need. Yes, you are God, and I believe that you're my portion, and I believe. You're more than enough for me. Oh, you're more than enough for me. I believe. Yes, I believe. 
Jesus, you're all I need. Remain standing. Hallelujah. Remain standing. I, I, I'm going to introduce our speaker, and I just want to just say something to you. I um several years ago, I I, I received an invitation. I received an invitation from a couple. I hadn't met them yet. They were recommended. I, 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 I mean, someone recommended me. They reached out to me. I called them. I called them right away. And as soon as I got on the phone, there was an immediate connection. An immediate connection. Not knowing that in the few, next few years, we'd be going to Africa together, Hawaii together, hanging out, eating at my second favorite Mexican restaurant on the planet, in Shafter, California. My first one is here in Tucson. And just, just the friendship has developed. You know, you um, in ministry, I have we have a lot of lot of ministry friends of ours, but. I would probably say that the speaker that I'm going to introduce tonight is probably my best friend in ministry. And probably, and, I, and I'm not exaggerating, the most on fire church in the United States of America. <laughs> like, I'd like to preach there every Sunday, you know. Like, it's four or five hours. That's just the normal Sunday morning service. They, well, I was at one service. They cast a demon out of a kid. Next thing you know, on the same Sunday, he was singing on the worship team. <laughs> it's called New Testament Christianity. <laughs> and him and his wonderful wife, Lori, have been tremendous friends. And, of course, you know, it's, it's, it's a joy getting to know Brother Mike, Prophet Michael. And not only is that, he's got a strong, strong prophetic gifting on his life. I want you to welcome Pastor Steve Seymour as he comes and preaches the word tonight. Give him a hand as he comes. Amen, amen. Thank you, Prophet John. Amen. And man, we're just so grateful to be here tonight. Amen with all of you. Amen. Y'all look good. God is up to something at the Citadel. Come on. Come on. He is up to something. Amen. There's something in the air. Come on. Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord today. I want to thank Prophet John and Meliana for inviting me to come this weekend. My wife sends her love. She double booked and, um, and was not able to make it. Um, and she sends her love and her apologies as well. Amen. Um, I'll tell you, we we are a we are a, a team. Just like you know, when you when you see Prophet John, you see Meliana. It's just like that with me and Lori. When you see Lori, you see me. Or um, I guess that's why my last name is Seymour. Amen. Uh, amen. But it is a privilege and an honor to be here, and we want to thank you uh, both for, for your love and your friendship. Man, we, we get together, we laugh a lot, amen. We have fun, and, 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 but I love these two. They're so real, amen. You know, you, you meet people, amen. Let's give it, yeah, give it up for your pastors, amen. Give it up, amen. You know, you meet people, you know, in your life that, you know, you see, 
in the pulpit and then you see them their other in in their real life and and it's like there's two different it's almost like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde you, you know what I mean the serious right you know that's on the real right <laughs> you know <laughs> amen but uh but these two you know what they are not like that every everywhere you go when you see them at church and you see them you know at their house amen they're the same amen and and that's what I love about you too amen um Pastor Rob, amen, congratulations, got ordained last week, amen. Pastor Robert and Pastor Veronica, amen, amen. Look at God, God, I'm telling you, God is up to something, amen. Sister Veronica reminded me of something um, that, that um, I, I, I had two, two uh, knees plate replaced, so I got to use a, the, the little cripple handle right there. I'm glad you put that there, brother, amen, but... Um, but, you know, I, I, Sister Veronica reminded me of uh, about four, three years. How long have you been in? Uh, four years? Three, is it three years now since Citadel? So it was probably about three years ago that we came to, to um, uh, Tucson, stayed in the hotel. You had just moved over to Drexel Heights. And, and I remember that. And we went to lunch with you guys. And at that point, I saw the ministry all over you. Amen? Robert, you weren't shaking your head that way. You was going. <laughs> but look at God today. Amen? Look at God today. Amen? What a mighty God we serve. Amen? 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 It's just a powerful thing to see the the anointing on somebody's life and then it, them stepping in and fulfilling the purpose and the call of God in their life. Amen. I can say honestly that God is faithful. Amen. And you all are on the right track. Amen. I can't wait for another five, three years when I come back. You, ain't no telling, man. You're going to have a big old building. You're going to be all suited and booted, bro. Huh? <laughs> have your pocket square in. You'll be like, hey. <laughs> Come on, man. Amen. Amen. It's an honor to be here. Amen. We, 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 uh, we love this church. We feel connected to the Citadel. Amen. Um, and uh, it's just a privilege and an honor to be here tonight. I want to I wanna just, th this is kind of strange. I've never done this before. I just want you all to know this. Um, I've, I've never really, um, I, I'm going to explain to you in just a few minutes um, what happened on Sunday at our church. But I've never really experienced what I experienced on Sunday morning. Amen. But I knew that God had a word for the citadel. Amen. And, and so, so I began to just prepare this word for the citadel. And, and, and as I was preparing the word, the Lord just kind of said, hey, why don't you just kind of try this out on, the, on your church and, you know, and, and just speak over them and just talk to them about this. And, and, and as I did that, all of a sudden, Prophet, I, I'm telling you, it was as if God was just downloading a, a prophetic word for this house in my spirit, even to the point where I've, I, and I've not done this in a long time either, I had to stop, as soon as I got done preaching, I went straight to my iPad and I started writing out what God had showed me about the Citadel. And, and all week long, I have been, I, I, I've been like that horse, you know, at the gate when they're in the, ra uh, uh, the races, you know, that, that where they're waiting for that gun to go off and, and them gates to open. That's what I've been like all week long. Amen? But uh, let me just talk to you just for a few minutes about what I, what I spoke to the house and what I, God has prepared for me for this house. Amen. Uh, and then I want to just release the prophetic word over this house tonight. Amen. God has given me some stuff that is just going to, it, it, it really is, it was just a download. I, I, like I said, I, it never really happened like that before. Amen. But see, many of us have heard stories of, of you know, a time when we face something that, that could have brought injury or could, could have even brought death, right? You know, how many have faced something like that, right? You, you know, you, you, you face the, you, you know, you face something that maybe you had an, an, an accident, but you had airbags. Come on, amen? You, you know, there was a car coming straight for you, but you swerved at the right time. Are y'all with me? Amen. Uh, or, 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 or maybe you were you were drowning in a, in a pool or whatever the case may be, but somebody came out and rescued you. 
Y'all with me here? Amen? And, or you were sick. And, and like we just sang the, the healer, I love that song. Maybe you were sick. Maybe you had a, a terminal disease, but God healed you. Amen. Come on, amen? Amen? amen. Uh, there are two very, probably the most powerful words in the word of God. There are, it's two words. But God. But God. And I look around at, at, at the Citadel. I, I, I got I, well, I to just back up. I can't, I can't release that yet. But, but, but God, amen. It's just, this, this is, can, can, can somebody in the house say, we are a but God church. Because see, what, what but God means is simply this. But God means that it's not the end of your story. Come on, somebody. Amen. It is not the end of your story. So if you have your Bibles and you want to turn with me, let's turn over to, um, to the book of, of uh, uh, Romans chapter 5. And we're just going to start there and then we're just going to unpack a couple things and then we're going to go right into the word because it's, uh, God is just, you know, he just, I'm just like boiling inside. Amen? So Romans chapter 5 verse 6 and, and I'm going to read out the New King James Version here. Amen? Um, Romans chapter 5 verse 6. When you have it, say amen. If you don't, say oh me. All right. Amen. Romans chapter 5, verse 6 through 8. Amen. We're going to read that tonight. For when we were still without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet perhaps for a good man, someone would even dare to die. But God, everybody say, but God, <laughs> demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I, I want to just talk to you just for a couple of minutes tonight about but God. Amen. But God, those, those words are so powerful. Those words are powerful in, in my life. And I know probably some of you, when I, by the time I get done here, you're going to think, man, I've had so many but God moments. Are y'all with me here? Amen. You know a little bit about myself, and I don't want to freak anybody out, but you know, I, I, I did go to college. It was called Yale. It started with a J. I don't know if you knew that, where that school's at, but, but, but anyway, you know, right? Right, and, and, and so, so I went to that school, right, you know, and they, we all had to dress in the same uniforms. They were orange. You know what I'm talking about, right? So, so, so understand, you know, when I say that many of us will understand the but God moments in our life, you truly will by the time I'm done here. Amen? Because understand, we have all had but God moments. See, I should have been in jail. I should have been dead. I should have been in prison for the rest of my life. But God, amen, in his fullness, amen, in his grace and his mercy saved me, amen, and, and, and uh, turned me around, set my feet on solid ground. Come on, somebody. Amen. A but God moment. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you, Father God, for your word. I thank you for your promises, God. I thank you, that God, for the hearers of this word, God. Now, and I thank you, Father God, that faith cometh by hearing, God, and hearing by the word of God, Father God. We thank you, Lord, as we release this word tonight over this congregation, God. Let it be food to the hungry, God, water to the thirsty, Father God, health to the sick, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Let's read on. Uh, in, in Ephesians chapter 2, it says, In which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. What he's saying here is, you were a hot mess. Amen? It says, whom also we, also, uh, we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God! But God, who is rich in mercy, come on, somebody. But God, who is rich in mercy, amen, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. Now, now I, I, I want you all, I want some of you to hear this, amen, because some of you will need to understand that one day we were lost. How many were lost one day? How many needed a Savior one day? Amen? 
How many needed a, they, they, they came to a place in their, in their life, they came to a, maybe a fork in the road or something in their life that changed them forever, amen? That was your but God moment. Come on, somebody, amen? See, I, my but God moment was in a jail cell. Amen? My but God moment was when I had an opportunity because they would let you out for at least 45 minutes to go to church. I chose to go to church. And all of a sudden, come on, I was dead in my trespasses. I was going to the big house. I was getting ready to, to spend the rest of my life in the penitentiary. Amen? But God, amen? But I had this but God moment, and all of a sudden, he saved me. He, he healed me. Glory to God. He freed me from an addiction. Amen? I should have been a drug addict. I should have had HIV. I should have been sucked up, ate up from the plate up, needed a checkup from the neck up. But glory to God. But God saw fit to change my life and turn my life around. But God. Everybody look at your name and say, but God. But God. Amen. But God. See, I love the story of Joseph. It's, it's my life work. I'm, I've, I've been writing a book for a lifetime about this, uh, about Joseph and the story of Joseph. But and the reason I love the story of Joseph is because we can all relate to the story of Joseph. Right? How, uh, many of us have been betrayed, right? Many of us have been stabbed in the back. Perhaps they didn't throw us in a cistern, but they threw us under the bus. Come on, y'all. So we can all relate to Joseph and his life. We can all relate to the hurt and the pain he must have felt by his own brothers selling him out and selling him into slavery. We can all relate to that. Because Joseph is, is, is like the, the, the guy that, that you see every day perhaps standing out in the, in, in, on, the, on the, the, the middle of the road, amen, in the divider of the road with a sign because he'd been rejected by his family, because he'd been lost, and because nobody wanted to deal with him, amen, because he maybe he was a dreamer or whatever the case may be. That's the Josephs that we're going after. Come on, somebody, amen. And most of us can identify with Joseph because we've been, we've been like that. We've had a situation in our life where, where, where we felt like we were just undone by people. But Joseph's attitude is what is startling to me. Because Joseph's attitude could have been, he, he, was, he was second in command of Pharaoh. And his brothers came to him, and they began to, you know, ask for food, of course, you know. And, I, you know, I don't know if he gave them an EBT card or what happened, but, you know, otherwise, but anyway, he fed them, right? But understand, when Joseph's brothers, after their father had passed away, their father had died, their brothers, his brothers came to him in fear, and they bowed to him. And they, 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 were, they were humbled before him. Amen? And, and Joseph says this, and this is a but God moment that is so powerful. He said, but Joseph said to them, do not fear, for I am I in the place of God? As for you, you meant evil against me. As for me, you sold me out. As for me, you betrayed me. As for me... You, you, you left me for dead. Come on, somebody. Amen. Somebody, I, I, I believe somebody here is getting this. They're relating. Come on. Amen. They're relating to it. Come on. Amen. But here's what it says. You meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. But God meant it for good. In other words, God set him up. Amen. God set him up. Come on, somebody. Amen. God set him up for, for, for such a time as this. And, and here is what I love about this. It says, to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. Joseph saved a posterity in his but God moment. He saved a nation in his but God moment. Come on, somebody. Amen. And, and can I just tell you something today? L listen, I, I, and most of you would agree with me. I don't know if you have grandkids. I know Prophet John and Meliana have grandkids. And most of, but some of you have children. Most, but, but, but listen, if you had a chance in your life 
to, to stop something from happening to one of the per, per, persons you love, your grandchild, your son, your daughter, your, your, you know, your wife, whatever the case may be, would you do it? Absolutely we would. Absolutely. And, and understand this. If I can have a but God moment, if I can go through pain like that, Come on, somebody. If I can be, you know, beat down, amen, talked about, convicted, evicted, restricted, whatever the case may be, if I can be any of those things, I would be that again and again if I could save a posterity, if I could save a generation. Put me down. Come on, somebody. You know what? Talk about me. You know, say, say bad things about me. Tell lies about me, whatever you want to do. But if I can save a generation, glory to God. And they can have a but God moment. You know what? You meant to do evil to me. But God saw a generation ahead of me. But God saw somebody ahead of me that needed to hear the gospel. Glory to God. So I'm having a but God moment right now. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen, amen. Praise God. Look at your neighbor and say, but God. But God. But God. But God. Understand, I love, I love to read the Word of God. And I was reading over in the book of, uh, of Luke. And as I was reading the book of Luke, I love what Jesus says to, to Peter. He says, Simon, Simon. Indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. This don't say but God, but here's what it says. But I. But I have prayed for you. But I have prayed for you. That your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. Grab a hold of that. Jesus said, Hey, check it out. He didn't say, hey, listen, Satan's asked to sift you like wheat, but don't worry about it. I got you, bro. It's me, ride or die. You know what I mean? He didn't say that. He didn't say that. He said, listen, Satan has asked to sift you like wheat, but I am going to take care of the situation. Amen? But I have prayed for you. Amen. What a sweet thing to realize that Jesus is praying for us. Amen? He's praying for every single one of you. Come on, somebody. And here is what happened on Sunday morning. I began to speak about Noah and his but God moment. I, I, I just began to speak about Noah and his but God moment. Amen. And, and it's found in, Rome, uh, in Genesis chapter 8 verse 1. And you're probably going to want to turn to Genesis chapter 8 because I'm about to unpack something that the Lord has given me over this house and it's all about but God. Let's read, Rome, uh, I'm sorry, I keep saying Romans. Genesis chapter 8 verse 1 says, but God remembered Noah. And all the wild animals and the livestock that were with him in the ark. And he sent a wind over the earth and the waters receded. Now, let me get there, okay? Let me just get there. <clears throat> because as I begin to read that and process that, God began to just unload some things on me that were just powerful, and I had to write them all down because they were just like, it was just too much for me to just remember or just speak out of my mouth. But here's what it says. It says, but God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the animals that were with him in the ark. Come on. The past three years, there have been times when you felt like you were floating. You floated from the hotel to Drexel Heights to 12th Avenue. Come on, somebody. Amen. And you felt like sometimes you were just floating. You were just floating around, and you're like, man, God, are we ever going to find a place? 
Are we ever going to find a place where we can be at home? Are we ever going to find a place where we can kick our feet up and say, yeah, this is our place, amen? Are we ever going to find that place? Glory to God. And Noah here, he was floating. He was just, for six months, man, the rain came, and all of a sudden he just out there being tossed to and fro, amen, by all the waves and all the wind and all the things. It just felt like he was being tossed and, 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 and forsaken. He probably wondered as he was feeding the cows and feeding the chickens and, 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 you know, or maybe his sons did it. I don't know. But, but all those things, all of a sudden, he probably began to wonder, where is God? He told me I could get in here. He told me I could start a church in Tucson. He told me that it would be good if I started one here because the people need the Lord. He said, he said where is God? The Bible says, but God remembered. God remembered the people of Tucson. God remembered the people of Drexel Heights. God remembered. Come on, somebody. God remembers. God remembers you. Amen. Amen. While you were in that three-year bubble, while you were floating, God said to tell the people of Citadel Church you were in a transition period. You were in a period of moving, amen. You weren't where you were going, but you, uh, you weren't there, but you weren't where you were going. Amen. But God says today, this day, as I release this word on you, you have planted, you have parked the boat. Come on, somebody. Amen. And God is doing a great thing in here. Sure, you were safe at the hotel. Sure, they were safe in the ark. Sure, you were safe at Drexel Heights. Come on, somebody. But sometimes we just had to think. Does God remember me? Does God? Does God remember me? I remember walking in this church, man. You know, what, a year ago? Was it about a year ago? Where's, where's uh, Junior at? When, when, when were we here, Rob, Junior? Was it April? February. I remember walking in here, man, and it's like, oh, Lord. I look at it now, I'm like, Oh, Lord. Come on. I look at it now. Let me, let me just, I, I, I can't get, I, I, I could just keep going, but let me just talk to you about a but God moment. Because see, what, ha what had happened was, what had happened was, yeah. amen, all of a sudden, Prophet John says, hey, we're going to start a church in Tucson. We started at the hotel. There were people that came, people that went, people that came, people that went. People that came, people that went. Oh, we got a place over at Drexel Heights. It's a nice church, but we're borrowing it. We're, we're, we're renting it from somebody else. So we have to tear down. We have to set up every week, amen. We have to do all those things, and it was taxing. It was taxing. Robert and, and you that, that, that stuck with it, amen, and set up every week and, and tore down every week and, and, and took everything to the house, amen, and spent hours upon hours, amen, carrying stuff back and forth. We... We, we glorify you today. We thank you because you know what? You did it, brother. You stuck with it. You fed the animals, my brother. You were up there feeding the animals while you were floating from to and fro. Glory to God. Come on. Amen. Are y'all with me? I, I, that's real. Amen. That's real. That's on the real. Right? Amen. But, but understand. Understand this, that God had a plan. So where I was going with that is this, that, that you, you, you were drifting, you were, you were drifting, but God, but God, one day, Rob drove, Robert drove by the church or, or heard about the church for sale. He called Prophet John. He, he, John Prophet John called the man, and, and the, the but God moment was, but God said, I'm not going to make you pay for it. I'm going to go ahead and just give it to you. That's a but God moment, can you say amen? Come on. Come on. It could have been like everybody else. It could have been, well, we're going to have to buy this church for $500,000 or $600,000. And Prophet John was ready to do that. I remember talking to him. I think you were close by or something. We, had, we were hanging out or something. And you were willing to buy it. But God. But God. But God. Come on. But God. Now let me read the second part of that verse. 
And then I'm going to get down and get me a drink of water because it's. Whew. Thank you, brother. Thank you. And God made a wind. Everybody say a wind. God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters subsided. Now, there's a, there's a Hebrew word that this word is. And it's the word ruach. Can somebody say ruach? ruach. Try to say it without breathing. You can't. Because it's literally a breath word. It's really a breath, literally a breath word. But if you look it up in the Strong's or you look it up in, in you know, one of the, the dictionaries that you may have of the Bible, you will see that this word also means the breath of God. Citadel. Are y'all alive today? I'm talking to the Citadel Church, amen? Because I want you to understand something. That God said, listen, I am, I, 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 he said, a, and God made a wind to pass over the earth. And the water subsided. This is what I heard the Lord say. I'm sending my breath on the Citadel. He said, I'm, I'm, I'm sending my breath. I'm blowing my breath upon you. Amen. This is the same word as his spirit. Amen. It's the spirit of God that he's breathing on the Citadel Church. Amen. And the Lord sent me here tonight to tell you this right here. My spirit has always been with you, but there is a new wind. Come on. Did y'all hear what I said? My spirit has always been here. My spirit was here over at the hotel. My spirit was here over on Drexel Avenue. My spirit was here when it was in transition, glory to God. But he said there's a new wind that is about to blow in the citadel, amen. And I'm blowing it over the citadel, a wind of purpose. Come on. I heard it very distinctly, a wind of purpose, amen. God says I don't blow wind just to blow it. He says there's a purpose for the wind that is about to blow over the citadel church. Glory to God. He said it's a wind of purpose that will be tangible. A wind that will sweep away the old. As I wrote that, the Lord just showed me. As I wrote that, the Lord showed me this. He showed me a, a yard. Most of you men are, well, you're in Tucson. I forgot. But anyway, we have trees in California. But what the Lord showed me is this. He showed me literally a yard full of leaves. And what he said was that yard, and I just looked at the yard full of wheat, leaves that had fallen off the tree. And all of a sudden I saw a wind come and just blow all the weeds away, or all the leaves away. He said, that's the kind of wind I'm blowing. He said a wind, a, a, a new wind, amen, a wind that will sweep away the old, amen, like a front yard, I wrote, being swept by the wind, not a wind to hinder. Understand this, you can be walking against the wind, come on, amen, and it will slow you down, come on, but the Lord says the wind that I am giving you will carry you, it will not hinder you, it will carry you, amen. In other words, your back is against the wind, and the wind is pushing you, amen, toward the destination, toward the purpose, toward the call of God in your life. Amen. There is a new wind that is blowing in the Citadel Church. Y'all with me? Look at your neighbor and say, if it didn't get good. Verse 3, or verse 2. The fountain, I'm just on verse 2. Wow. We better hurry. The fountains of the deep and the windows of heaven were also stopped, and the rain from heaven was restrained. And the water receded continually from the earth. At the end of the 150 days, the water decreased. Everybody say six months. Six months. Then the ark rested. Now, I want you to hear this. I want everybody to just, you know, lean in to what I'm about to tell you. Everybody just kind of lean forward a little bit. Just, just, just do a lean forward. Like you're leaning in. You, 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 know, you know when somebody is, is whispering to you and you've got to lean forward? I, I, I want you all to lean forward because I want you to hear what I'm about to read to you. And the waters receded. Then the ark rested in the seventh month, the seventh day of the month, on the mountain of Ararat. 
on the mountain. Everybody say the mountain. He put you on a mountaintop. Come on, somebody. He could have chose to land you in the valley. Come on. He could have chose to put you somewhere in the desert. Come on, somebody. But he chose to put you on the mountain. Glory to God. He chose to put you. Come on. Hey, man, watch this. Watch this. He chose to put you on the mountain. Come on. He chose to put you on the mountain. That, that is a prophetic sign of a mountain right there. He chose to place you on the mountaintop. Amen. He said, where I have placed you is very important. I placed you on a mountain. It's a high place. Come on. It's a high place. Everybody say high place. It's a high place. A place where you have greater vantage point. Come on, somebody. When the, when, whenever the, the Israelites or whenever the children of Israel would fight a war, they always wanted to go up to the higher plains. Why? Because they could see the enemy. They had a better vantage point from, there, from that point, from the higher place. They could see everything around them, and they could attack easily the enemy. He said, I'm putting you in a higher place. I have placed you in a higher place. Come on. Come on. I have placed you in a higher place. Huh. He says, a place of greater vision. You know, when I'm in Bakersfield or Shafter, where I live, you can't see very much. Especially this time of year, they're shaking almonds. You can't see nothing. But when I get to the mountain, when I, when I begin to drive up the grapevine and I look back, sure, all I see is dust. But I could see for miles. Come on, somebody. And what I, what I heard the Lord say is he says, I'm not just giving you a vantage point. I'm giving you a vision point. I'm giving you a place where you will, you, you will have greater vision. Amen. And therefore, you will have greater victory. Are you all with me? Come on. Amen. I, and, and then here, here's what it says. It says, and the waters decreased continually until the 10th month. Hmm. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September. The 10th month. Say what? The 10th month. He said the water receded until the 10th month. Amen. And then check this out. On the first day of the 10th month, the tops of the mountains were seen. He said, I'm creating you for vision. I'm creating you to see mountaintops. Come on, somebody. He said, I'm creating you to see the mountaintops around you. You are sitting on a mountain, and therefore you can see all the other mountaintops. He said, I'm creating vision inside of this house. Amen. I'm releasing in the heaven a, a greater vision, and what you could not see before will soon come into focus. Come on, somebody. Well, on, on the 10th, uh, on the on October the 17th, 2024, I prophesy over this house that what you couldn't see before will come into focus. What you did didn't have a vision for before will soon come into focus and you'll be like okay there it is oh there's that new fence oh these houses are for sale prophet I, I didn't know that but now they're for sale and all of a sudden you begin to see way more than you ever dreamed come on somebody after all what does the prophet Joel say your young men will see visions I'm so glad I'm a young man. Don't let the hair fool you. All right. Are y'all getting anything out of this? This okay? This all right? Can I go a little bit further? Can I, you know, go a little deeper? Huh? Because understand something. Whenever there's vision, there's anointing. It's, it's, a, it's a byproduct of each other. Come on. Are y'all with me? It, 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 when you have anointing, you have vision. When you have vision, you can see the greater anointing. Are y'all with me? It's a byproduct of each other. Amen. And so, so when you begin to have greater vision, you'll begin to see greater anointing. How many want greater anointing? 
Come on. Amen. I know I do. I can raise both hands and go, hey, yeah, it's me, God. Right? Amen. But I want you to just read a little bit down the page because I want to talk to you about what happened next. Now, I, you know, as I begin to read this, I begin to get excited, and I, I think I got about three messages out of the raven and the dove. You know, I'm like, man, I'm, I'm writing this down. The raven, you know, what it is, what it does, and the dove, what, what he represents. Come on, somebody. <laughs> then the dove, verse 11, came to him in the evening, and behold, a freshly plucked olive leaf was in her mouth. And Noah knew that the waters had receded from the earth. I, right now, I can't hardly contain. I want to go. Yeah. Like we used to do in the old church. That's what I want to do. Oh, I just did it. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Okay. But as I read that, I began to get excited for the Citadel Church. I began to think about what the, what the dove represents. But, but then I started looking closer at what kind of leaf the dove brought. Are y'all with me here? See, he could have picked a mulberry tree. Come on. He could have picked an a, a, a apple tree. He could have picked an orange tree. He could have picked a leaf from any tree he wanted to. But he chose the olive tree. And the Lord said, listen. What I'm doing at the Citadel is bringing continuous oil. Come on. He said, I'm not bringing you a jar of oil. I planted a tree at the Citadel where there will be oil forever in this house. Come on, somebody. Come on. He said, there is a tree in the Citadel, amen, that will provide oil, but not just for the oil for this house, but to supply and sustain many other houses. Come on. Come on. I, I, hope, I hope this is making sense. I hope you guys are, are grasping a hold of this. Because understand, what the Lord really showed me was I, I was like, well, the Lord, it's an olive branch, you know, or olive, olive leaf or olive branch. You know, no big deal. And the Lord said, yeah, but read what it's about. So I read what it's about. It's about peace. Right? It's that when you do when you extend an olive branch to somebody, you are making peace with them. Right? Amen. I'm gonna say this prophetically, it's not in my notes, but I just heard the Lord say this. You're making peace with this community. Come on. And here here's what I heard the Lord say. Those that have stolen, those that have robbed. Those that have come to this place meaning harm are soon going to be in here meaning good. They will be sitting in places of leadership, amen, and, and they will be the ones that will go out and connect with the other people in this com community, amen, and they will bring other people in and people will go out and they will be like, we're not touching the Citadel Church because we see what's happening at the Citadel. We see the guy I used to buy crack from. We see the guy I used to buy brown from. We see the guy I used to buy my heroin from. We see him. He's on the front row every Sunday morning at the Citadel Church. Glory to God. Something happened at the Citadel. He walked in there and he came out all oiled up. It was crazy. Y'all have seen what happened. Come on, somebody. Come on. Amen. I, you know, I come from old Pentecost, you know, I, I did, wasn't always, you know, you, you say, well, pastor, I thought you went to jail. Yeah, I did, but I was raised in a Pentecostal church. I was raised in Assembly of God church, actually, but I can tell people it was a hair on fire Pentecost. Anybody know what a hair on fire Pentecost church is? Yeah. Amen. You know, right? Who don't know? Who don't know what it is? Let me show you what that is, okay? If your hair's on fire, what you going to do? You going to go like this? That's a hair on fire. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. Ah! <laughs> but understand, I heard the Lord say very specifically, he said, 
there will be more oil than you know what to do with. And he says, but I have created this house to be a house of distribution. A house that will share oil with others. Come on. A house that will not be greedy, will not hang on to the oil they have, but will begin to share oil with others. Amen. That will begin. Listen, here's what I heard the Lord say. The Lord said that will begin other works. Amen. Where the oil will flow. And the same oil like Dr. Morocco, the same oil that's at the Citadel on 12th Avenue will be the same oil that's at the Citadel on the north side. That's on the Citadel in the east side. That's at the Citadel on the west side. Glory to God. And God said to tell you tonight, amen, that there's enough oil for everybody. And as you begin these other works, there is an anointing that is flowing in this house that will flow to these other works. And when you go to one on the east side, you won't know the difference between the one on the west side because the anointing of God is in the house, amen, and because of the citadel and the leadership of the citadel. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 If my wife was here right now, she'd be like, hey, babe. That means, that means right there, that means land a plane. Yeah. I'm like, deep plane, deep plane. No. Uh, huh? Time to soar. Wow. Keep going. Okay. Keep going. Okay. We're, hey, hey, we're like the, uh, the airport uh, the airport at LAX. I used to live in L.A. down in, in Hawthorne or uh, uh, Southgate. And, and you'd watch them planes. And they come in and they go and they fly around. They have to fly around because there wasn't space to land. So I'm going to fly around one time. Are you all with me here? Before I, before I go to the next thing, I want to I want to just say this right here. Can everybody see what that says? Everybody say it real loud. Protect this city. The ark. The ark was a place of protection for the people of God. The ark was a place of perfect per protection for Noah's family. Come on, somebody. Amen. And what the Lord said to me as I read that, and I, I wrote it in my notes on my phone. I don't have my phone, but I wrote it on my notes in my phone. Protect this city. And what the Lord showed me was that, that this house, amen, the Citadel house, although it was floating around for a little while, amen, but it parked in Ararat, amen, it parked in a, on a mountaintop, it parked on a place where it's a city on a hill, where the lights of this place will shine bright all over Tucson, Arizona, amen, and to the far other parts of Arizona, come on somebody, amen, but what the Lord showed me is the ark is still here. There's never going to be another flood, but there's an ark on 12th Avenue. There's an ark on 12th Avenue, and that ark is called the Citadel Church, where people can run there and have protection. Where they can run there and be safe, amen? Where they can run and be safe from the wrath of God over their life, glory to God. Where they can run and find a, 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 a harbor, a place where they can rest, a place where they can take a breath, amen? A place where they can change their life forever, glory to God. A place where, where, where we don't judge anybody because we had a bunch of stinking animals in there anyway. Come on, somebody. Now we just got a bunch of drug addicts and a bunch of, bunch of other people that, that, that had no hope in the world world, but God says, I'm giving you hope. I put an ark in Tucson, and it's called the Citadel Church, and glory to God, that Citadel Church will be the ark to the rest of the community. Come on, somebody. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Shondarabosa Panadaboshi. Hiatatarabosha. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the citadel. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I want you to read verse 20. I'm, yeah, verse 20. I'm about to land the plane. The Lord's download more, but I, I'm about to land the plane. I don't know when, but I'm going to land it. I promise. It'll, it'll land sometime. Verse 20, then Noah built an altar. Noah built an altar. Now, now listen, I, I, I have to just say this because I was perplexed by this because I didn't know the connection. I, I didn't know the connection between this. But as soon as I read altar, I heard order. I heard order, and I, so I had to go back and read, and I'm reading, and, and I'm reading, and I'm like, God, what are you telling me? Order. I see altar, but I don't see order, and God says, don't you see that Noah was a man of order? He put things in the right perspective and in the right order, amen? He was, he didn't go and go, hey, like, guys, let's go build our house. Let's go, you know, go, go plant a garden. Let's go all that. No, no, no. When Noah got off the boat, he put first things first. Come on. He was a man of order, and God saw that order. Come on. Noah built an altar. He built a place to worship God. Come on. He built a place to worship God. He said, listen, I'm going to put the first things first. I'm going to set things in order. And, 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 and I believe this. I believe the reason Noah was blessed, and I know he had some hiccups and had some problems with his family. They were crazy. You know, they were, you know, they were cray-cray, right, if you will. Amen. But, but, but understand, I know Noah, because of what he did in the, at the end of the flood, was just as important as the beginning. Because he built an altar. Because he built a place to worship. Come on. Come on. Prophet John, you built an altar. You built an altar. You built a place for people to worship. A place that were floating, of people, a bunch of people that were just floating around Tucson. Didn't have a home church. But Prophet John, you built an altar. You built an altar for them and said, Let's get together and worship. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. You're my hero. Amen. I think we all ought to thank him. Amen. Father, thank you. Thank you. Because, see, God is a God of order. And as I began to process what, was, what, what the Lord showed me, is it, it was really strange because, Prophet, you, you've never called me from, well, I, I guess you've only been there twice, and I was there with you the first time, but you called me from South Africa one night. And, and, and I didn't know what this word order meant until I began to process our conversation on the phone. And what you spoke to me about was something that, that, that I believe is such a need in the church today. Because you have a team now, and you're beginning to set things in order. There is an order of things in this house now. Amen? There's an order to how you get credentialed by Passion Ministries. There's an order to how you become a member of this church. There is an order to all the things that, that and, and before it was kind of like, well, you know, go to a growth track, come to the class, and, you know, and wham, you're a member, right? But now you have set things in order, Prophet John. You have begun to set things in order with your team, amen, and began to set things in order in such a way that, that, that and this is what the Lord said. I, I just want you to hear what the Lord said. 
The Lord says because the Lord said because you are, you are passionate about the order of things, I am about to bring fresh wisdom and fresh revelation that will astound even those who have written books about church growth. Let me read that again. I want you to hear that. This is what the Lord said. The Lord said, the Lord said, because you are passionate about the order of things. Fivefold ministry. We talked about that. Because you are passionate about the order of church, the order of things, and how things should be placed in order. Amen? Because you are passionate about that. Amen? He said, I am about to bring fresh wisdom and revelation that will astound even those who have written books about church government. To this house. To this house. Understand. Understand this. God is up to something at the Citadel Church. You better get ready to expand. Amen. Come on. Get ready to expand. Amen. I, 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 I'm telling you, I'm, I'm going to speak this prophetically because what, what happened next, what happened next was very powerful. I'm just talking now what the Holy Spirit is telling me. Because what happened next was this. God told him. God told Noah. He said, now go and multiply. Go and fill the land up. He said, go be fruitful and multiply. Come on. Now understand. I, I, I don't have this in my notes. I didn't write this down last, last Sunday. But understand what the Lord said to me just now as I thought about that verse was that there will be a multiplication, not an addition, but a multiplication in this church. Because, see, you can go one plus one is that's two. And, two plus, you know, one plus two is three. Two, you know, two plus two is four. But, see, God says, no, I am bringing a multiplication to Citadel. I'm bringing the multiplication so fast that you may have to get some buckets out for people to sit in. Amen. You, you, you may have to just, you, you know, bring it to where you just pull the chairs out and everybody kumbaya is on the floor. I don't know. But, but understand this. What I've seen and what the Lord was very specific about was be fruitful and multiply. And there is a multiplication in this body and in this church coming. Amen. Because the, because the word is being released. There is oil here every single week. Amen. Whoever is preaching is bringing fresh oil. Come on, somebody. Amen. And it's like the widow. Amen. That, that you know, that, that finally she went, went to the man of God and said, hey, they're getting ready to sell my sons. He said, how many jars do you have? Oh, God. Come on. Oh, come on. Come on. Uh, 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 oh. oh, boy. Come on, somebody. How many jars do you have? How many vessels can you put your oil in? Because understand, if she would have had one vessel, they would have put oil in that one, and it would have stopped. But let me tell you something. There's about a million people in the city of Tucson. There's a million vessels that, that need some oil, that need to be poured into, that need the oil of God poured into them. Glory to God. And as long as there's oil, as long as there's vessels, there's going to be oil. And God is about to bring an increase where you're going to be begin to pour oil and pour oil and go next, pour oil. Pour oil, pour oil, pour oil, next, come on, pour oil, pour oil, pour oil, and all of a sudden you're going to look back and go, we still have more. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. Bishop T.D. Jakes first started out in ministry. Y'all remember what he used to say? Come on, somebody knows. Somebody knows, Bishop. You know, when I was younger, younger preacher, I wanted to be like Bishop T.D. Jakes. I had my, you know, my 18-button, you know, coat, you know, all down here, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah, and I realized, uh, well, actually, I heard Bishop say this one time while I was listening to him preach. He said, stop being a cheap copy of a great original. And I was like, whoop, sell the suits. But I speak to you tonight and say, get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. 
Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Hallelujah. Get ready. Come on, get ready. Get ready. Bishop Paul Morton, great man of God, sang a song years ago. I've not forgotten. Because this is the song of this house. Are y'all with me? Now, I can't sing, but I'm going to sing it anyway. So y'all just hold on. Don't plug your ears because I want you to hear the message. It just says, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Lord, if you're healing, healing in this season, don't do it without me. Come on. Come on. Don't do it without me. Come on. Lord, if you're blessing, blessing in this season, don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Come on. Amen. Let's get that don't do it without me in our hearts and amen in our minds. Listen, because understand, some, you know, th this is a real thing, I guess. I, I just heard this a couple months ago or, you know, six months or so ago. There's this thing called FOMO. Anybody know what FOMO is? You don't know what FOMO is? F-O-M-O. -O. Anybody, anybody know what FOMO is? Come on, raise your hand, wave your hand in the air. Okay, so a couple of you do. FOMO, fear of missing out. That's a real thing like anxiety or whatever. I don't know. But understand something. Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, I don't want to miss it. Don't do it without me. Come on. I don't want to miss it. I want to be on the bus. Come on, somebody. I don't want somebody to call me and say, wow, something powerful happened at the church. You should have been there. We, we have a saying in our church is, YMO, bro. You missed out. Right? I want to be a part of it. I don't, you know, it, it's like this. It, it, and and I, I got to land the plane. I know I'm going to quit because it's almost 9 o'clock and some of y'all got to go to work tomorrow. Um, but, but understand this, okay? I love reading books about old revivals. I do. I love reading books about that. I love reading about a guy named William Seymour who happens to have the same name I do. Go figure that. Come on. I love reading about him and how he would come into the church on Bonnie Bray Street at first, and then he moved over to, to a play, little, little place called Azusa Street. But how he would go into that church on Bonnie Bray Street, and he would kneel before the Lord, and he would put his head in a box, and he would begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. And, and when he felt the need, it wasn't like, you know, we're going to have three songs and two offerings and, you know, and then you take it, Pastor. It was like when he felt the need to get up, when God had given him something to preach, he would stand up and preach it. I love reading stories like that. I love reading stories of the old time. We were sitting one day with Ann, Ann and John Bosman, Dr. Bosman and Ann Bosman at our house one time. And Ann began to unravel some parts of her life that were just astounding about John G. Lake and Smith Wigglesworth. And I'm like, really? really? You, 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 you met the man? I love those things. I love to hear stories like that. But understand something. Understand. As much as I love to hear the stories, I want to be in the middle of it. I want to be right here in it. Come on. I want to be in the middle of it. Amen. I don't want somebody to tell me how it looked to them. Come on. I want, I want to be right here in the middle of the revival. Amen. I want to get my feet stepped on. Come on, somebody. If I lay down, I want people to stand around me so they don't jump on top of me or whatever. But I want to be in the middle of the revival. Amen. How many of you say, I want to be in the middle of the revival. Amen. 
Can I tell you something? There is a revival, a fresh wind that is blowing in this house, amen, in the Citadel Tucson. Come on, somebody. And, and if you miss one service, you're going to miss it, amen, because there is about to be, there is about to take off in here a power and an anointing that will come forth like never before. There will be a hunger and a desire for people to want more and more and more and more and more. Come on, somebody. So I want you all to stand with me tonight. Hallelujah. I've been a pastor for about 20 years now. Um, and I've learned... A lot. I still have a lot more to learn. I just want you to know that I am not perfect. I'm not perfect. I fail all the time. Thank God for my wife who cleans up after me. <laughs> but what I've realized, Pastor Rob, what I've realized, Pastor Robert, Pastor Veronica, Prophet John, Mother Anna, is I can't do it alone. If I'm expected to keep up the ark, I can't do it by myself. I have to have help. I have to have somebody help me with that. Come on. Amen. And so I'm going to ask us to do something prophetically tonight. A prophetic act, what they call a prophetic act. Prophet John, Meliana, I want you to come. Pastor Rob, just come stand right up here in the front. Pastor Robert, Veronica. If you work in any capacity in the church, I want you to come down and stand in front of them. Come on. If you're children's director, um, you know, whatever you do. Amen. Sound man, come on. Junior, you're not going to get out of this that easy. Where are you at? Just stand right in front of them. Just like that. Just like that. Just come on. Amen. We got lots of workers. You know, you know how you can tell a healthy church? When you ask for all the workers to come and most of the church comes up. That's a healthy church. Because what you're doing is you're, 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 you're launching people. Yeah. You're empowering people. Come on. You're empowering people. And, and so what I see in my eyes is a healthy church. Amen? Because it's about empowerment. It's about, hey, you have a gift. I see the gift. I want to pull that gift out of you, and I want to put you in a position where you can operate in that gift. Now, I want the rest of the church to come down. If you're a visitor, that's fine. If you don't want to come, that's fine. But if you're visiting tonight or you're, you're part of the church, I want you to just come. Uh, will you all come? Come on down. Amen? Come on down. Come on down. I'm not going to keep you long down here. If you can't stand very long, we'll put you a chair up here if you want to. But the Lord just showed me very specifically what I need to do tonight. Understand why you all are standing in front of these. In fact, I, I just have to say that, I, am I preaching Saturday? Saturday, I'll, I'll speak a little bit more about this, but I want to just talk to you about something right now that I feel very strongly about. Because every single one of you have a part to play in this church. Amen? And why I've asked you to stand in front, usually you... You know, I, I love when people say, I got your back, you know. But, but oftentimes when people have your back, they have your back like this. Right? I got your back. I tell people all the time. I told Brother Michael this over and over. 
I don't want you to have my back. I want you to have my heart. I want you to go in front of me, not behind me. I want to lead you. And I want, to, I, I want you to go in front of me so that you can have my heart. Amen? We can meet face to face because the heart is not on your back. And so I really, I, what I sense the Lord saying is this, there is a heart transfer that is getting ready to take place tonight, amen, in, in your life, amen. And, and I love it, man, that everybody, most people here are workers, but, but if you are a, a person that comes to this church, you're just maybe not working right now, but there will come a day when we're going to need all hands on deck at the Citadel Church. We're going to need greeters. We're going to need, you know, keepers. We're going to need catchers. We're going to need people that are, that, that are ca- buckets of oil. Amen. Come on. Amen. And so what I would like for you all to do is I would like for you to step forward and, and you all, you leaders, step forward and just begin to pray with one another. And we do that tonight. And then I'm going to pray over you guys and we're going to go home, okay? But let's just do that. Just step step forward. Let, or t- You know, you guys step forward. You leaders step forward and just begin to pray over one another. I want you to pray for these that are, that are up here, okay? Come on. Come on. Don't be shy. Just step forward and pray. Just begin to pray for one another. Pray for them. Pray that God just gives the heart of the Father over them. Amen? Come on. Maybe you can pray with one another. I know there's a lot of leaders, but pray for each other. Amen? Begin to pray with one another. Begin to transfer that. Make that heart transfer. Amen? Begin to make that heart transfer with one another tonight. Amen? That God will just move in you and, 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 and work in you. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. 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 stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when I don't see it you're working 
Even when I don't feel that you're working, you never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see that you're working. Hallelujah. 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 My brother, come here for a minute. What's your name? Roger. Roger. Amen. You go to this church? No. Okay. You know the what the Lord what the Lord showed me um, as as Brother Lester was praying for you. He showed me that um, that there has been a time when when you were floating and wondering, is God still there? But God hears you. God hears your cry. Even over your family members that you've been praying for. Those that you look at and think, God, what am I going to do? God, they need to find you. you. You have a son. Even that son, three of them, even that one son that's been a prodigal, has been running from God. God says, I know his name. And I'm calling him. Even when you don't see it, I'm working. Even when you don't feel it, I'm working. But I heard the word of the Lord say, listen. As you have been floating, trying to find your way. Trying to find where to go, what to do. How, how, where, to, where can I plug in? Because what I see in you is this. I, I see that, that you have been to other churches and perhaps you go to a church now. But it's like there's not really a connection of, of like a, you, you don't, you, the Bible says he shall be like a tree planted by rivers of living water. Amen. In, in Psalm 1, there, there, is no, there, there is no roots there. But the Lord said this is a place that I have called you to to lay down roots. Because there is an anointing in you that you carry. Amen. There's an anointing that you carry even as a young boy. You carried this anointing. Amen. And 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 people thought you were different and 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 kind of, you know, like, man, he, he's a holy roller. He, he, he's, he's too holy for me or whatever the case may be. But it's because you have so much oil and it's precious. And the Lord says, I want to pull the oil out of you and let you share it with other people. And can I tell you something? There's a, there's a call on your life to begin to minister and to begin to proclaim the gospel. Amen? I don't see it in, behind a pulpit yet. But what I see is proclaiming the gospel in the streets and proclaiming the gospel in, to, to people that are lost. Amen? But God has anointed you to do that. And, and what the Lord showed me, and I, I'm not trying to sell the citadel to you. I'm just talking about what I'm telling you what God is telling me. Okay? But what the Lord really showed me is this, that, that because you have no roots, you have no fruit growing. Amen? Right? And he said, if you put roots down in a house that has fertile soil, he said, I will bring the fruit out of you that will be unexpressible, yet you won't even be able to contain all the fruit that I'm pouring into you. Amen? Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for my brother. Thank you for the purpose and the call of God on his life, God. I thank you, Father God, that you, God, have given him, Father God, visions and dreams, Father God, even as I spoke tonight, God. I thank you, Father God, that, God, you have, you, you have found a place of rest for him, God. And, God, I thank you for his sons that, God, are, are coming to you. I thank you for the one, God, that he has been praying and probably has stayed up late at night uh, most of many times crying and, and praying for God. I thank you that you know his name, that you have called him, Father God. And, God, it's, it's simply a run that will end, God, in salvation and purpose. So I thank you, Father, for my brother. Thank you for his life. I thank you for the call of God on his life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's pray together, all right? Father, we love you. Lord God, we're so grateful to you for the Citadel Church. God, I'm so grateful for the word of the Lord that has come forth tonight on behalf of this great 
great church. I thank you, Father God, for people, God, who are who have who have Father stuck with it, God, who have not jumped ship, so to speak, God, but have but have carried God the animals and, and done the work, Father God. I thank you, Father God, for, for those that have stuck with it, God, and, and have created this atmosphere of praise and worship, God, and an atmosphere where people can come and feel like they are connected and apart, Father God. I thank you, Father God, for this prophetic church, God, who a visionary church, God, that sees greater, Father God, than, than other people can see even in them. I thank you for a great leader, God, Prophet Harky and Meliana, I thank you for their leadership, God. I thank you, Father God, for their vision. Because, God, they're seeing their vision unfold right before their eyes. I thank you for them. May their hands never get weary. May their feet always run like deer's feet, Father God. Father, I thank you for a new freshness and a fresh anointing in their life, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Amen, amen. God bless you all. Can we thank the Lord and Pastor Steve Seymour from on what he gave, a word of the Lord. That was the word of the Lord. If I could have your attention for just a moment before I dismiss you is that I, I, I want to, as he was talking, I, 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 and he began to unpack that, that moment where Noah steps out the ark and builds the Lord an ark. I realized something. He was creating a culture. They had been they had been several months in that in that boat. That before anything steps out, before we do anything, the presence of God is the most important thing. Now, I realize that there are might be people that might not think that's important. Then the Citadel Church may not be the place for you. May not be the place for you. And I pray that you find another place that you can serve. But in this church, we're going to build an ark. And we're going to build an altar. That's what we're going to do. We're going to protect people. And if you come in here and you don't want to protect people and cause trouble, this is not the place for you. But if you came in here because you want to be a part of what God's doing, we're going to welcome you. We're going to feed you. We're going to prophesy over you. We're going to lay hands on you. We're going to pray for you. And we're going to sign you up to be a part of our leadership team. Come on. <laughs> and more than likely, you'll probably end up being a preacher. <laughs> come on. But praise God. Let me, let, me, let me bless you. Let me bless you. Father, we thank you, Father, for this, this word. We thank you for Pastor Steve and Lori. We thank you for Jesus Saved International Church. We thank you for Prophet Michael. We thank you for all that was done tonight. Thank you for my wonderful son, Charles, and MC, and leading worship. Annabella and Larry. Father, bless our time. Bring us back tomorrow morning. Let everybody that has to go to work call in sick and say, I, 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 got, I, got, I, got, I got to go to the, I got to go to the ark. I got to go to the ark. We got to go to the ark today. Not the doctor, the ark. Come on. So they be in here to hear another wonderful word. Bring us back tomorrow night as well. Full of faith and full of the power of the Holy Spirit. Father, I ask that you multiply your people's sleep and rest. That they wake up, they wake up ready to go. What can I do to glorify God today? Wake them up at 5.20 in the morning, 5.20 a.m. They can brush their teeth and join the early morning prayer from 5.30 to 6.30. And cry out for revival for the city of Tucson. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Here's what I want you to do. Tell three people you're going to build an altar. God bless you.